Hello everyone, my name is Iken now from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything in Vata installation, everything going green. Hope you guys are cool today. All right, so I've been inundated with a lot of calls and people wanted me to do a review of the charge controllers that we use right here. So I thought about it, I said, okay, which is one of the widely used products here in Nigeria? Okay, in terms of the charge controllers and the inverters. Okay, so it was an easy pick. So I picked uh, Felicity charge controller. All right, so we're gonna do a review of this product, but for me to be able to do this review of this product, I will definitely have to use it okay over time to see how it functions so i just don't feel it's proper and i don't feel it's a very honest view for you to be able to uh, review a product that you don't use simply because you were handed over the leaflet that explains how it functions you should be able to use that product over time and be able to say okay this is my experience with the product this is my honest views this is actually how it works so you guys owe me some money right <laughs> so I had to get a 120 amps charge controller because I have a whole lot of solar panels on the roof. So I needed something that would be able to handle the solar panels that I have. So here is the Felicity charge controller, 120 amps. So I'll definitely be using this product over the next one month to be able to tell exactly how the product works, what my experiences are. I'll be monitoring it almost like every 30 minutes to see how the charging is to see how it's treating the batteries my general view about what exactly um, a good charge controller should be like all right so pretty looks good um, so this is what it uh, so this is what it looks like on the inside okay so it pretty much comes with an instructional manual that teaches you exactly how to operate the device setting of uh, doing all the settings in the charge controller to be able to care for the batteries and all of that So there's always going to be a copy of the instructional manual that teaches you exactly what to do All right, so inside too, what we have on the inside there's a silica gel on the inside Okay, this is to prevent any form of moist from damaging the appliance and um, What else do we have on the inside? You will always have the warranty card that covers you for over the period the warranty is given all right, so you'll always have a copy on the inside. So this is what the charge controller looks like right here. Uh, it comes with this cream, black and orange stripes on it. Looks pretty good. I like the way it looks. So definitely I will let you guys know what my experiences were with this charge controller over the next one month. So if you haven't subscribed guys, come on now, this will be a good time for you to subscribe, all right? And don't forget, that's how you support what we are doing right here. And of course, the more you subscribe, the more we can reach out to more people. And of course, keep you updated. You will always be the very first to be updated once we have fresh and brand new videos coming up, which actually happens right here every single week. But stick around, don't go anywhere, okay? So I've used this charge controller for the last one month. All right, so I monitor the charge controller to see how it charges, how it functions generally. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys my honest views about how this charge controller works. All right, so the first thing that I liked about the charge controller is the fact that it gives me the option of a cable lock, using the cable lock. So while we we're doing the installation for uh, the charge controller, um, it gives you that option of using a cable lock. And one of my biggest frustrations sometimes when you get on location is that you discover that the charge controller was meant to use probably like the limit of the diameter cable is supposed to be like around 16 mm or 25 mm but you have something bigger a bigger diameter cable it becomes a struggle to squeeze it into that square box screw hole all right so but this gives you that option of using a cable lock and the beauty of it is that there's really no limit to the diameter cable that you're going to use it doesn't really matter it could be 10 mm it could be 16 mm it could be 25 whatever all you need to do is to get the cable lock for that diameter cable clip it in and you insert it here it's pretty easy so it makes your job a whole lot easier so this in itself has made the installation to be very very easy and there's nothing like making an installation to be as simplified as possible. Nobody likes stressing himself when you get to location and you're trying to uh, in, do an installation of this nature. So that's one of the things that jumped at me that I really, really loved a whole lot about this stuff. Most of the charge controllers that I see, they don't have that cable log 
option all right so for the fact that this gives you that option of a cable lock it's really beautiful okay so that's one thing that i will say that i loved about this charge controller now i'll tell you the second thing that i didn't like i didn't like the fact that the charge controller is pv powered so what that means is that just like other charge controllers when you connect your batteries to the charge controller terminals that's the negative and the positive it powers the charge controller comes on but that doesn't happen here until the solar panels are connected so uh, in terms of powering the charge controller it is pv driven so if you do not connect the pv to the charge controller the charge controller will not come on so if you're a first timer and this is the first time that you're using this charge controller it can be a frustration you could actually think that the charge controller is bad because you will keep trying to find out what the problem is because the battery is not powering um, the charge controller so you keep wondering what exactly is going on because you're already used to charge controllers that use um, batteries to power up the charge controller but the moment you connect the PV to the charge controller, if it's during the daylight, no matter how low the light is, the charge controller is going to come on. So that's one of the things that I didn't like. Because part of the frustration too could also be that sometimes when you're on location and you finish your installations very late in the evening, and of course you say, okay, I don't want to come back to this same location the next day. Let me do everything that I can. So because the batteries are powering the charge controller, you would do all your settings it will enable you to do all your settings because you do not rely on the pvs to be able to power this guy and so you can now settle down and do all the settings that you have to do select the type of battery all of the settings generally in this charge controller but it becomes a very big frustration because while the installation ends very late in the night you're going to lose light and once you lose light the charge controller is going to go off like it stays dead completely dead when the solar panels when it loses light as when it's late in the evening 6 30 to 7 p.m it goes completely off so you won't be able to do any settings until the very next day so what that means is that you definitely have to go back to that location because your installations are not complete all right if you don't do all the settings that you have to do because you have to set this up so that it's up and running uh if it's a lithium battery you have to select a lithium battery what type of battery it is you have to do the selection here okay so painfully that's going to take you back to the location the next day and that's totally very unnecessary but then that's how the manufacturers of the felicity uh did their own designs because everybody has a right to do their designs the way they want it so sometimes it comes as an advantage sometimes it comes as a disadvantage so for me that's a downside for this charge controller for me one thing again i loved a whole lot about this charge controller is the fact that it doesn't make noise all right it's completely noiseless like completely noiseless of course you guys are very familiar with the noise that comes from the charge controller all right that noise essentially comes from the fan and sometimes it can be very annoying okay so you have this fan that is inbuilt in the charge controllers that ensures that um, the system is completely cool all the time and works with a particular specified temperature all right so you have the fan uh, bringing down the temperature of the charge controller and also sucking the heat out all right so that's the function of the fan but this particular charge controller completely does not have a single noise you know at first i waited a while for the sound to come on it just didn't come on i was like what is wrong is the fan bad you know so at the end of the day i realized that this guy does not use a fan so it's completely soundless so it's a beauty to see that there's no noise so it's really lovely so that's one of the things that i loved about it so instead of using the fans it uses a heat sink so the whole of the back here is a heat sink so this heat sink is what sucks in all the heat that uh, the charge controller generates when it's handling all of those amperage and all of that so i love that but that in itself could also be a subject of discussion some people could also say that um, it's important that it has a fan so that you can protect all the mosfet and all the components and chips that you have inside of the charge controller uh, the capacitors the resistors all of those things that you have there that's when you have it uh, completely without a fan that the temperatures will affect it and over time it will cut down on the lifespan but I honestly don't think so. These are the things the manufacturers would have checked. They would have tested to confirm that, look, this actually works before they begin to push it into the market. Because I did a little bit of research and I realized that all their charge controllers, regardless of the amperage, 60, 80, and all of that, 
they all use heatsink as opposed to using fan. All right, so that's something that I really found. It was really cute. No fan, works pretty well, completely noiseless. So I loved it. So basically I'm taking it, what I like, what I didn't like, what I like, what I didn't like. Of course, a charge controller can always meet <laughs> every single of your expectation. But if it meets a certain percentage, then it's a pass mark, all right? So one of the things that I didn't like was the screen display. So I kind of felt that the screen display is quite tiny. All right, so it's really, really very tiny, okay? Um, it doesn't really show me much of what's going on on the screen, for instance. Um, I don't know when the charge controller is absorbing. I don't know when the charge controller is bulk charging. I don't know when the charge controller has reverted to floating, uh, which is very important for someone like me. I am really a sucker for big screens that tells me exactly what is going on. But aside even the size of the screen, those features are not there. So it doesn't tell you when the charge controller is floating. It doesn't tell you when the charge controller is bulk charging. It doesn't tell you when you're doing an equalization and all of that. So you don't know what is going on. So how I was able to tell when it's floating is because of the set voltage that I had put in the floating. And of course, when it's bulk charging, I know it's bulk charging because it's still climbing to get to that set voltage uh, before it begins to absorb. And when it begins to absorb, I know the voltage that I set for it all right so that's how i'm able to tell what exactly is going on besides that if you're not that professional to be able to read all of those things you can't tell what exactly is going on but if you're not an installer it doesn't really matter so what matters is that your installer does a very good job do all the right settings about the charge controller and that's it so for me i am a visual person i like knowing what is going on at every point in time i like to tell what the temperature of the batteries are and all of those things so these are the things that i didn't find in the charge controller so one of the things that i absolutely loved again about the charge controller is the fact that it wakes up pretty early i love it when charge controllers wake up early because that's very important of course you also know how important it is for the charge controllers to wake up early because the battery has been on night duty completely drained so it urgently and desperately needs a backup energy from the sun and that's what this guy does because i was pretty impressed when i came downstairs around 6 18 in the morning and the charge controller was already on i was pretty impressed most charge controllers at that time would definitely be sleeping <laughs> snoozing all right so if you look at the screen you'll see them snoozing they are still sleeping but this guy wakes up pretty early and i loved it so this is what the screen does when it's waking up in the morning. So whenever you see this happening, the screen is trying to wake up. So that's very important because at the end of the day, no matter what the function is, the essence of a charge controller is to be able to get energy from the solar panels and charge your batteries adequately. And this guy, I was pretty impressed that he woke up that early to be able to take on the batteries. So just like it wakes up very early, it also charges very late in the evening. And sometimes you're wondering, where exactly is it getting all the light from? When the light is extremely low, this guy keeps working. And you look out on the outside, there's absolutely no light. Where exactly is it getting it from? But the charge controller is still working. You know, so it charges still very late. So it wakes up early and it also charges very late. And that's a very big plus. And another thing that I also liked is the fact that I love the way it was charging my battery. But it's gonna to be tough to say cause I have a lot of solar panels and this is a 120 amp solar charge controller. But I noticed with the remarkable speed of how it fills up my batteries. Because you know that sometimes your charge controllers can actually limit the amount of energy that comes from your solar panels. But this guy does the job excellently. The charge controller draws in the energy and fills up the battery very fast. Cause when I checked, and it was already at that absorption voltage and I was like, wow, that's pretty impressive. So I like the fact about the way it charges your battery. It charges it really very fast. So which is one of the major functions and duties of a charge controller, being able to charge your battery and as quick as possible. One of the things I loved very much too about the charge controller was the setting interface. There's nothing I love absolutely so much like having a setting that is very simplified. Nobody likes anything that is very complicated because when you're doing your installations, you don't have time to begin to figure out how these things work. So if you look here, this, the um, settings are quite very simplified. And in the charge controller itself, the setting tool is also very simplified, just like you have it in the manual. Okay, so it just has one button here 
All right, so you click, 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 click. So when you select a particular function, you hold it down for a second or two, and then it begins to blink on that particular function, giving you that room for you to change to whatever settings that you want. All right, so that's basically one of the things that I also love. Nobody likes a very complicated situation. You waste your time unnecessarily. There's a lot of things to do. And in terms of simplicity, I will give it to this Felicity Charge Controller. So one of the things that would also be a challenge for lots of installers will be the fact that it shows you only a single digit voltage option. So what that means is that it only shows you the voltage calculation with a 12 volt. And this is for both 12 volts, 24 volts and 48 volts. So if you choose a 48 volts, you definitely have to be doing the maths by yourself because it's going to be showing you with that single digit unit, which is a 12 volts. So you would have in uh, the voltage charging from somewhere like 13.5 14 max 15 so if you don't know you'll be looking for like 57.5 thereabouts and you keep pushing and pushing but when it gets to 15 it reverts back again to 13.5 so you'll be doing the match yourself so if the charge voltage for your battery is 57.5 you definitely have to divide that by four then you'll be able to get the unit that you're going to impute in this charge controller and that's also what you're also going to do when you also select this device in that particular voltage you'll have to times the figure to be able to get the accurate settings to suit your 48 volt system so i didn't like that so in most charge controllers you would always see so if it's a 48 volt system most batteries are charged with 57.6 uh, thereabouts so and um, that's what you'll be definitely be looking for to see in the voltage options here but it just gives you that um, the, the voltage based on 12 volts then you'd have to do the maths by yourself by uh, multiplying the figures by four and that way you'd be able to get that so for some installers if you're not experienced this could trap you a, a little bit in the site because you're trying to figure out what exactly is going on why is it not giving me the options because when you select a 12 volt it, it gives you that setting of 12 volts and limits the voltage to around 15 volts so if you select a 24 volt it's supposed to increase beyond that if you select a 48 volt it should shoot as much as 57.6 58 59 thereabouts all right everybody thank you so very much that's all we can take on this stuff I enjoyed my experience with this charge controller. So I'll be looking up next for the next product I'm going to review. Thank you so very much, guys. If you haven't subscribed, kindly help us subscribe, all right? Because that's how you support us in what we're doing. And of course, as we get to bring you more and more videos that keeps you freshly updated all the time about what's going on in the world of solar technology. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to share, and do not forget to like. Thank you guys so much and see you in the next video.